Hey guys, it's Amira, and this is FTB Stoneblock 3. Hope you're all having a great day. I'm a self fantastic one, so let's kind of just push forward and uh, move on with the pack here. So, in between episodes, I went ahead and worked on chickens a little bit. Watched some uh, Netflix and uh, just chilled out. Did some leveling up of chickens, just kind of passively as I did that. And uh, we got 26 of them, I think, done. Almost 29, actually. This one's almost done as well. Just need to throw some seeds in there. And then, yeah, we'll have 27 done. I even did ones like the netherite. I got ourselves the interpearl. We got glowstone. Even gas deer. I forget why I did gas deer. I was trying to get to something. It might have been the cobalt one. Yeah, I did the cobalt chicken as well. And um, just a bunch of our chickens are done, right? So as we move forward, I will do more of these. I even did prismarine. Mostly because I just want to decorate prismarine. So over here I have some uh, chipped prismarine blocks here. That I'm just using for decorating for a new room up here for refined storage. And uh, yeah, just really good time. Because we get a... A lot of resources really easy, like to the point where I can just throw blaze rods on the floor. Like, I don't think about it at all whatsoever because they're virtually infinite, right? So one thing they did change with the chickens, though, I should mention, is yesterday when I was doing this, right? You saw us crossbreeding. When I crossbreed them, they would gain stats. They don't do that anymore. They don't gain any stats from crossbreeding. You have to actually breed like a gas tier chicken with a gas tier chicken to actually get the, um, you know what I mean, the, the stat increases, right? But that was kind of to justify them speeding them up. So that's why they're actually so fast now. So they wanted to speed them up, but they wanted to make it harder to get to this point where you actually have 16, 16, 16, or sorry, 10, 10, 10 chickens and 16 of them, right? So yeah, that's definitely what happened there. Opened up a bunch of uh, chests as well. I didn't really get anything. You get so many records out of the higher level ones. It's actually kind of obscene, but um, you do need some records. So I guess that's not too bad. One thing I got that was a pretty cool reward, can't really use it yet, was a Kleinstar Ver. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced it the Ver right, but the EMC is 1.5 million. This is basically a battery for Project E. So later on in the pack, when we actually get to things like Project, uh, sorry, uh, Creative Flight. So the Rending Gale, I think it's called. It's, no, it's like the Swift something Rending Gale. This thing here. Yeah, Swift Wolves Rending Gale. There you go. When we finally get one of these and actually get to Creative Flight, um, yeah, we'll be able to power it using this. So that is actually really awesome. Really good reward there. And I guess down here too, I set this up with the thing to be able to turn our mob farms on and off. I can't put it on the wall. I was just doing it wrong. I had this thing actually set to the other mode. So this mode here, and that's why it wasn't working. I was just uh, being a derp and uh, it does work. One thing I noticed too here, too, these uh, mob player filters here that make it so I go through. If they have a red zone signal, it actually inverts them and then I can't go through. <laughs> a little weird, but... Not that big a deal, I suppose. Do this down here too. It actually has 130 levels of experience in it. Uh, mostly because this thing was full. So I just went here and I had to drain the tank very slowly. You can't actually pipe out of the tank and put the liquid in here. Because they're different types of liquids. And I don't know an easy way to kind of ordict them. So I probably can't ordict them actually. Because we found out this one is way more condensed experience than this one. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what we could do about that. I guess I'll just have to keep having showers here once a while to move my experience around or switch to a different storage method. We could go with the, what is that other one? The experience, experience, this one here, insightful crystal and throw some holding upgrades on this, I guess. That could be a good way to store experience because I don't know, we need something, but uh, yeah, I just can't pipe, right? That is the main thing. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much everything I did here. I guess what else I did, the last thing was up here. Like I said, I started working on a room. This will be where we start working today. I have a big drawer wall here. So these are just the uh, frame drawers. So I just have the framed ones. I did some decorating. If you want to do decorating with these too, it's actually really easy. You go to uh, framed here, make one of these puppies. No, it doesn't matter which one, but if you want to decorate it, basically you take the frame drawer, you put in this slot here. So the third slot, then what you want to decorate it in uh, with is this slot, this slot, and this slot. Uh, you have to have something in this slot and this slot, and then you're actually able to uh, craft it. And this changed something else too. So each part, each block kind of changes a different part of it. One thing I learned too is uh, don't use chip blocks. So if you use something from chipped, it causes your pack to um, crash when you try to pull it out of the table. So don't try to use chip. So I just went with uh, dark prism in there. So pretty cool. And uh, like I said, we're going to go ahead and work on processor automation. So what we're going to work on is this here. We need to do a recipe sequence with Corade here. Basically, we take these processor binding run it through three deployers. So one with iron, one with silicon, one with red zone, and then you'll actually get this raw basic processor. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, mostly automate that right away, right? So that's kind of the idea. And uh, this is gonna be how you do processors in this pack. So if you go project E uh, instead, 
The only thing that's really changed with Project E that I noticed, it's pretty normal, right? So it's pretty straightforward to actually get your printed. Uh, you have to run it through, I guess, to get your initial presses, you have to go through the multi-servo or the metal press. And uh, once you have those, you can actually just go ahead and make your presses. Then you'd be able to do your processors, right? So that's kind of the different kind of versions that they went with. I think it was kind of the balance it out to make it so people just didn't go refined because it was so easy and people just uh, would give AE2 a chance, basically. I think it's why they did this. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get this automated here. And uh, we're going to use a boiler setup to uh, get this done. I just need to go ahead and grab a couple more things and uh, we'll jump right into it here. So let's go ahead and uh, get into processor automation and just throwing in a bunch of quartz in here. We need a bunch of silicon, so I'm getting that done. Also, I let this thing kind of grow, I guess, in between episodes as well. So now I can actually farm these, right? And then you take these, I think, and then combine them. Then you get these lapis lazuli clusters. Then if you wanted to, you could process them through a crushing wheel. But it really doesn't seem very useful, to be honest. Maybe for lapis, I guess, because I don't think there's actually a lapis chicken, is there? There might be no lapis chicken. Oh, there is a lap. No, there's lapis blue. But I think that's just the dye, right? Yeah, that's just, just dye. So maybe for lapis, but... For most of the other ones, there's already a chicken for So these things are actually pretty slow, but it was worth checking out. I'm sure some pack's going to use that as like the early kind of gen of resources for something. I can definitely see that coming, right? But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, grab that there. Grab that. We don't need that stuff. We just need this right now. We should be good. Has some other stuff here as well. So I have a, I guess, four fluid tanks because we're going to use a boiler setup, like I said. And then I have a steam engine. So you go to the ponder on the steam engine, the way these kind of work here kind of connect it to a fluid tank and a two by two at least. Then you add the, uh, what is that called there? Um, I forget what it's just called there. <laughs> the steam engine, right? And then, yeah, it's got a multi-blocks. Once you add a shaft, put some heat under it, give it some water, and you get some rotational force, just like that. So this is going to be the most basic form we're going to set up, and uh, it should be pretty simple. Uh, the way we're going to do water, too, is going to be with a aqueous accumulator. So I went ahead and made one of these. You just need some bronze here. The way I did that was, I didn't do it this way with the dust, but it takes three copper and ten, and you can just do that in the kiln, right? So I just used the kiln there. So I have a slime problem. I don't know how to deal with the slimes. <laughs> I have no idea. I could use the uh, mega torches. That may interfere with my mob farms. I really don't want to bother. And there's nothing I see that I could use to just disable a specific mob. Uh, mob. But I have them all over my base. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do about them. Actually, I'm going to chop those right now, too. Uh, one last thing we need here is a belt. Uh, actually, we don't have. I keep thinking I have JEI sync or something, but anyway, let's go to a build here. Well, we may need like two of these actually, so let's go ahead and grab two. And that should be pretty much everything we need. I think so, right? That, that, I'm just going to drop you off right now. I don't need the stuff on me, I just needed it uh, up here. So that is good. Then we'll go ahead and uh, figure out where the center of the room is. So I think it's nine in. Because we're going to put in this wall right here. Go ahead and uh, hammer you out. Actually, I should be using this. There you go. Go back a little bit. That looks fantastic, right? So that should be pretty much the depth we should need to go to there. Go ahead and dig down one more too. So do that. Actually, it'll be five long on the belt because we need to run this cross belt to be able to have it move to uh, automatic, kind of put the thing on the belt, move across the machines and move in between the machines. So we have to use a belt here. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab, I guess the shafts first. So let's go ahead and grab you. Put one shaft there, one shaft there. Go ahead and grab ourselves a wrench because one went wrong. There you go. Then we just right click on one, right click on the other. And then we got our belt cut in place here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, dig this down, that down, maybe go back like one more. That might be okay there actually. Let's go ahead and uh, grab this stuff. See if we can actually figure out how far I want this back from the belt here. Should be good about here. Five should be more than enough. So let's go ahead and dig back two more. Just like that. The light should spread in here in a second too. So it should be dark for too long. But we're going to grab our fluid tank now. Go ahead and uh, pop them down. These things are really easy to make too. So they're just copper sheets. So you can just use your hammer there to kind of get these sheets done. Put them in a 2x2 two two and a multi-block. You see that the capacity is actually 32,000. We need to get heat under this too. The way we're going to do heat, there's different ways. You use campfires, you use the blaze burners, or you use a magma block. So we're going to use a singular magma block for our heat. That'll be uh, what we go with for right now. Then we need to get water in this as well. So I just kind of want to have the water kind of out of the way. We could just do something like this, right? We have these uh, water eggs too, so I could actually just do this for the water. There you go. Go ahead and uh, grab you. Put this down. Then we go ahead and grab ourselves another water egg, right? And do that. Then the aqueous accumulator will start actually generating water, right? See there, there it actually says water, which is uh, fantastic. Exactly what we want there. 
Uh, we need to go ahead and uh, pipe out of that too. So let's go ahead, pipe out of you, pipe that up there, grab ourselves a wrench here and uh, get that wrench so it actually fills this up and now it's getting water, right? And that should be fast enough for our needs. Like this one's only gonna produce 2,000 stress units. I think if you go with like the max size of this one, it's hundreds of thousands, right? So it actually produces tons of stress if you really wanted to. But uh, I just want to have like 2,000 to play with here. Uh, next thing we do is grab the steam engine. Go ahead and uh, figure a spot where we want to put it. Maybe like uh, right here. That should multi-block now. See there, it says boiler status passive. So this one's a passive, but the campfires or the magma or... Uh, yeah, I think just those two. It's actually a passive boiler. If you actually use the blaze burners, then it's, uh, I think, an active one. So we're just using a passive here. You can see the stress here is too is going to be 2048, which is what we're going for. And we'll put a shaft on this. And you have to do this a little weird too. Uh, see, there's a little dot on the right there. You can barely see it. But depending on the way you place that is the way it kind of goes. <laughs> right now, I know it's going to go up and down. That's not the way I really wanted to go. I want to go this way, right? Right there, right? So the, it's going horizontally, or you can make it go vertically, right? So I wanted it uh, this way right here. Then we're going to have a rotational speed controller here, because we want to be able to min-max the speed coming out of this, right? Throw the large cog there, and uh, that should effectively be ready to go. And our power should be coming out of this side here. Now, we need to power this belt, so let's go ahead and uh, do that next. Uh, we'll need another shaft for this, so let's go ahead and run a shaft right there. And kind of look at this and think about how I'm going to do this. So I would probably, I'll probably end up using chain drives, to be honest. So let's go ahead and just pop that there, pop that there. Go ahead and uh, bring that there. And that'll be the way that, that runs. Then we know which way our belt's going to be running. So that'll be kind of deciding how we set up our deployers here. Then I think we have to have these uh, one space in between, right? The actual deployers. That's to be uh, one space in between that and the belt, like one empty space, right? So we'll take our three uh, deployers here and then hunt down our wrenches and try to get them aimed the correct way. There you go. That should be that there. Then we need to get the power into these. Then we can actually figure out what our top end on power is as well. What would be the best way to wire this up to? Hmm. I haven't really thought about this. I just wanted to make sure we had enough space with the boiler here. So I don't need my map on right now. Let's turn you off. You need to hit control M to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and grab ourselves the case fans, or sorry, chain drives. Maybe bring this up too. Then I could just do another belt, couldn't I? Yeah, we'll just do another belt. Then I don't have to do anything fancy here. Let's do that right there. I guess I only need two there. Actually, no, I need all three for that. Grab our mechanical belt, bring that across. Then I should be able to just run a shaft straight into that, right? There you go. And that should handle that. So they're all working now. They're all going up and down the way we want. And then we can start tweaking out the speed here, seeing how fast we can actually get this to. We should be able to actually get it quite fast. Let's see here, 128. 192 is too fast. Let's try 180. Not gonna work. Nope. I think it's gonna be around here somewhere. There we go, 170. And look how fast that is. So we are gonna get a ton of speed out of this. That is not bad at all. Uh, we're going to have to have these going. For right now, we're going to use some, uh, probably just some uh, hoppers to actually hop air in the materials. We'll be able to uh, fully automate that later on. I know I'm out of chest too, so let's actually pull you out. I guess I need oak, right? So let's go ahead and grab some oak here. Go, yep. go ahead and uh, do that. Get ourselves some chesties. Looks fantastic. Go ahead and grab ourselves three hoppers. Go ahead and grab them. Sweet. Uh, I said three. Then we need, uh, I guess, two more chests as well. Actually, I actually already have them on me. That is fantastic. Then we're also going to need some funnels. So let's go ahead and grab one recipe of funnels here because I think we get two. So these will be what pick up and drop off the items out of the chest. And anything else we need here? I don't think so. Let's get this in place first to kind of see if we do. So this will be the pickup chest. This one will be the one that drops off the binding. Let's go ahead and grab our two funnels here. Have one there. Oh, definitely not there. Go ahead and uh, grab you. Go right there. So that should work. And that should be effectively almost done here, actually. Uh, like I said, we'll have it more automated here in a bit. Once we have refined storage, we've got to automatically move these items in here in a pretty clean way. But uh, for right now, for the first couple batches, um, it'll be drop things off in the hopper and uh, kind of work it out that way. Let's go ahead and grab a couple bindings. So we'll need binding. Where is the actual binding? This stuff right here. So we'll need like a stack of that start. Then we'll also need the redstone. 
then our different materials, right? And we also need the silicon. So let's grab a stack of silicon here. So diamond, we'll do like 60 of these to start. So let's go ahead and grab 16. So this would be one of the processors. Uh, then we'll need gold. I'll probably do another big batch of these in a couple minutes here. I just want to make sure this is all working, right? So let's grab like 60 to them. Then for right now, let's grab like 32 iron because you use a lot of these ones here. So that should be good. And that should handle the first kind of set of recipes here. And then the binding will go in there, but we put that in last. Uh, this one here will be the material that we're actually doing, right? So the first one we'll do is the raw iron. So we'll put the 32 iron in there. Uh, these we could just pre-buffer. Oh, actually, that's completely wrong. I have that uh, in there in the wrong order. Let's uh, break you for a sec. Hopefully I get my redstone back. It is going to be a little important to put it in the uh, right order. But anyway, this will be automatic later on. Go ahead, uh, pop you back down. Go ahead, uh, rotate you, rotate you. Did I get all my... Yeah, I did get the redstone. The redstone goes in the last one. Then I think the silicon goes into the second one. Let me check those. Make sure I'm doing that right. Silicon second, redstone third, and then the material you're using. Okay, first. So that is correct there. Then effectively, I should be able to grab, say, the iron. Uh, I already did that. I guess the bindings, right? Go ahead and grab the first 32. Pop these down here. And we should get super fast processors. So not bad at all, right? So this will be effectively our automation here. I'll clean it up and a lot of this will be hidden in the back. You won't be able to see that, right? And uh, yeah, listen to that. Just a lot of satisfying pop sounds. <laughs> actually pretty awesome there. So that's cool. And we should have enough in there to actually do, say, 16 of these as well. So I'll go ahead and do that and drop you off. Should do 16 of those ones. Those ones are the improved. These ones were the raws. These ones are the advanced, right? So once they are done, go ahead and grab our 16 diamond. Then go ahead and grab our bindings, right? So just like that, we have really easy processor automation. That is actually a really good speed too, just using the uh, 2000 stress units. Not too bad. And uh, we'll automate that a little bit more. I may go ahead and uh, do a couple more stacks of these uh, improves and the raws. We shouldn't need too much, many more of those, but I'll do a little bit more here. Then we'll actually get into, I guess, power next. We need to get some power actually. And then once we have power, we'll get into refined storage. So we just need to go ahead and uh, get these all smelted up here. We'll have power for, I guess, uh, iron furnaces pretty soon. But uh, we'll go ahead and drop those off. Those will get smelted. Then I also want to go ahead and uh, hunt down those upgrades we got yesterday. We got some upgrades for the, um, what you call it there, the thermal machines, right? I just can't remember which ones we got. I think we got at least one of the integral. Uh, not integral, the this one here. Yeah, one reinforced. We'll grab that. And I think we got some other ones as well. Right there, the hardened, right? That is cool. And uh, hopefully we have some more. Maybe we don't. I would like to have another one of these here because it'll actually like triple the power output when I make a generator here in a second. I also think I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, one of our coal chickens. There we go. We'll use the coal chicken to produce all the coal for it. And we should only need one chicken because these things are actually pretty silly, right? So that is good there. Uh, in here, we should have our actual processors. Let's go ahead and uh, grab them. And then we should be uh, pretty much good to go, right? So yeah, we'll start off with a sterling generator. I think it'll be the first one we go with. And uh, we'll be able to uh, speed that up a bit with what we have here. This is the actual recipe over here. Let's go ahead and grab. Maybe two of them to start. Grab that. Let's go to, oh, I actually have a pen. I don't even have to do anything, right? Go ahead and grab ourselves a couple gears. Well, maybe nuggets. Really, really simple way of kind of handling our power at this point. So yeah, these will just end up over here for some, uh, somewhere. I don't know really where. We'll figure that out in a second. Probably have it directly touching the controller. I just can't uh, remember how much power it's going to produce, actually. So this one will produce 120, and this one will end up producing 80. We'll be able to do better upgrades later on and make them produce way more, but uh, for right now, that works. And uh, they are kind of where we need them. Let's go ahead and get rid of you. I guess the first thing we need here is a controller. So we will need some quartz and rich. So let's go ahead and get that done. I grabbed us a whole bunch of iron and quartz, so we can do uh, quite a few stacks of these. You burn through this stuff pretty quickly. That is good. And then hopefully we can actually just uh, grab the machine casings. We'll need a couple of them. Let's all go ahead and grab them. And then we should be able to grab the actual controller here. Hopefully. Go ahead and get you. Get ourselves uh, one of them. We'll go ahead. Uh, do we need this? We'll put this out from the wall a little bit. Maybe something like that. Then we'll just, like I said, aim these hopefully straight at that. So one will go there. One will go there. Then we'll end up with a roost there probably producing all the coal. So these will direct touch. Maybe we'll go ahead and make the roost right away too. So we go ahead and actually get this uh, all powered up here. Oh, I don't have JDI sync. I'll have that in a couple minutes system. <laughs> Stop it. Stop doing the things you're doing. 
Good to grab ourselves a pay here, hopefully. Awesome. And then grab ourselves an actual roost. And we should be able to produce all our coal needs right here, right? That one coal in there. How much is one of these guys going to produce? Like, how silly is it? That quickly? For, yeah, this will be no problem at all whatsoever to actually keep up. Uh, do I have any item pipe on me? I do too. Let's go ahead and grab you. Pop one there, pop one there. And then we'll just go ahead and actually, uh, guess, uh, wire that up to actually go in there too. One will probably fill up for the other one. No, they actually both got it. That's not too bad. And that should start powering that. And that should be able to stay powered. No problem at all whatsoever. They'll get all kind of pre-buffered there. Then be uh, pretty much good to go. So that handles the power part of it. Next thing we need is a grid here. So let's go ahead and hunt that down. Uh, go ahead and grab this. Always forget how easy it is to craft the stuff for uh, refined storage. It's actually like so much easier than uh, AE2. Anyway, go ahead and uh, grab like four of them because we'll need them. Go ahead and grab ourselves the grid. Then on top of that, we'll also need a disk drive. So maybe go ahead and get one of those as well. Then we need to go ahead and grab ourselves a storage disk, right? So we're going to go ahead and go with, hopefully we have enough to do it. I may have to go grab some more stuff here. I want to get a 64K right off the hop. I think we need 27 of these. So I don't know if I have enough here. I guess we'll find out really quickly. We're already out of redstone. Had to go and grab some silicon and glass, but it looks like we got our 27 now. Then we go ahead and take that one and take it up to the next level. And that'll actually make our 4Ks, right? And uh, we'll need nine of those ones. And you go ahead and take those ones. <laughs> and, uh, oh, no, don't do that. Go ahead and turn them into the, which one's here? The 16Ks. And wait. Okay, I don't know why I said I didn't have them for a second. I was a little worried. Then finally, we have our 64K. That's fantastic. And that's our first one. And then we should be able to uh, turn that into a actual uh, storage disk, just like that. With that, we should actually have a working system here. Uh, did it actually give me my quest for the... Uh, where's that out there? The storage systems. Where's storage? Storage is right there. Make sure we got everything there. Grid. Oh, we need to make a crafting grid, too. Totally forgot about that. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can actually go ahead turn that into a crafted grid forget uh, what we need for that pattern fluid crafted grid so it looks like we just need that there go ahead and grab you fantastic then we go ahead and uh, pop that puppy down go ahead and put the uh i guess the disk drive somewhere i guess we'll just put it on top of right now go ahead and, uh, pop it up here this is the disk here it's gonna make it so we could actually store sixty-four thousand items so it's actually a really good storage so as you see right there sixty-four thousand. How much power is this actually using right now? It's only using five RF tick too. So we have uh, enough to expand here. And uh, we can start storing our items in here basically. So I can just uh, kind of drop that off. I haven't used uh, refined storage for a while actually. Let's see here. I want it to display uh, normal. I want stretch small, medium probably be where I go with it. Search box, I want JEI synchronized. I love this one. So yeah, this is what I have, thought I had earlier. But I want to go to, I guess, uh, I guess refine now. I'll search it here and there at the same time. So I always like sync on myself unless I want to toggle it off. And uh, one thing I noticed too, is it has the thing too, where you hit uh, control and click and then you could do the crafting. If you have the stuff there, it'll just automatically move the stuff in. So you don't have to come in here and hit the button, right? So it has that too. That's just an REI thing. That's actually really cool. So you can actually do it on, uh, say this one over here too. So if I want to go ahead and uh, maybe craft uh, one of these here, I just hit control and click that. Actually just automatically moves the recipe. You don't actually have to uh, do the stuff and things, right? So I thought that was really rad there. Anyway, let's go ahead and drop you off. I think the last thing we need to do, actually we'll do it from over here, is grab ourselves, what is there, external storage? We need one of these to get our drawer wall kind of linked up to this as well. Uh, we will need these because we have not made any of them yet. Go ahead and grab you. I'm actually out of quartz and rich, or did I put it all in here? I put it all in here. Go ahead and grab that. Sweet. Let's go ahead and uh, try making one of those, maybe two recipes. And then we want our external storage, right? And with this, we'll be able to hook up our door wall and everything should be good in the world. Actually, what, what is it doing there? Okay. I thought it was going to pull stuff up, but basically all we have to do now to get this linked up to our system, it's got to come down here. Let's do that. Then I don't know if we could spin things around with this particular wrench. Might need a different wrench here. Uh, what wrench do we need for refined? I forget what it's called, actually. Go in here, go to at refined. It's a weird looking one. <laughs> That's all I remember. This one right here. Go ahead, uh, grab one of them. That is uh, what we need here. And with that, we should be able to rotate that. That is what we want. And then we want to go into this and set the priority to something above zero. So it always tries to put things into the drawer wall first. So anything I want to do bulk storage in will end up in there, like all my diamonds and stuff like that, right? 
then smaller items will end up uh, just going to the store disc itself. But uh, hopefully we can dig down here. I think it's uh, right around here. There you go. Then we just need to run some cable and uh, link these up. Then I can start uh, pulling things out of that, uh, I guess that, uh, what is it there? The RF tool storage thing we're using and uh, getting that uh, all into the system as well, right? And into the drawer wall. I've been just kind of waiting on this. Uh, could you please get out of here for a second? There you go. I'm making a complete mess here. That is good. And then I just need a little bit of stone to kind of cover that up. But with that done, like I said, we are pretty much good to go. So if I want to go ahead and grab our diamonds here, go ahead and grab you. I'd throw them into the drawer wall. So they'll probably get a central spot, something like that. The system should be able to see that, which is what we want there. And then I'll be able to, like I said, grab all our bulk things, store them in drawers, and then anything else, like the single one-off items, say I have wrenched here, will just end up on a storage disk, right? So just a way to kind of, I guess, maintain our system and make sure we're just not flooding our disk with just pointless stuff that could be stored in drawers, right? So anyway, that is uh, refined storage. We're up and running. We're good to go. And uh, let me get all the stuff out of this because I have, what, like 300 stacks of items or something? 290 to go through to kind of get all sorted out here. So let's go ahead and make us another crafting grid. Also went ahead and made us one of these uh, wireless transmitters. I just want to get to uh, wireless crafting if, if we can, right? I have most of our drawers kind of set up here. We actually look pretty good. So yeah, a lot of them are filled up now. This thing's completely empty. And uh, yeah, on our drawers, we only have what, 2,000 items, I guess. But if I had all the items from the actual drawers, it'd be much, much higher, right? How close does that be to? Let's get you here. Are you actually close? You're like up there. Um, I'm not gonna bother with you. If you're down, I probably would have went for you. I want to start getting their loot a lot more often. But anyway, uh, last thing we need here is a wireless crafting grid, right? So let's go ahead and uh, get that puppy. Also went ahead and made a, another Sterling Dynamo, and one of these here just a charging station, just so I could charge this thing up really easy. So yeah, just super super cheap, but uh, just a slow kind of poor man's battery. But we could pop that into there. And that'll actually do that, which is what we want. I think we'll need some range upgrades as well. But uh, we grab these here and grab the transmitter. Hopefully pop it on top. Sweet. And then I think we need to grab some range upgrades. So I don't know how much power this actually takes is the only problem. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a power hog it is because it is going to uh, stress our system a little bit, I guess. Uh, we need the, what are they called there? Range upgrades, right? Range upgrade. Is it here? These ones right here. There you go. Go ahead and see if we can actually make like four of them because uh, that would be fantastic. Sweet, we got another four like that. And I forget how much range you actually get out of this thing too by that. So 48 blocks away. So up to 40 blocks away, we should be able to uh, access our actual inventory system now. So I'll shift and right click that on there. Should link it to it, right? So it's linked to uh, four, six minus 38. And up to 48 blocks away, we should be able to uh, actually, I guess, interact with our inventory system, which is actually really rad. It makes our life a lot easier, right? So. That is a nice little upgrade there. That won't encompass our entire base. We may have to run some cables and some more of the uh, wireless transmitters, I guess, uh, as we kind of move along. But it did up the power up to 51 FE a tick, which actually is not that bad at all. Now that I think of it, right? So yeah, just uh, work out really well because we are producing, what, 200 currently. And that uh, will be definitely increasing upon that as we move forward. Also, I pretty this up a little bit too. I didn't know this, actually. You could use the casings right on the belts and it kind of covers up the belts, right? So if you actually, if I uh, slowly punch this, go ahead and do this right here. Yeah, you can just use the casings right on the belts and just covers them. I knew you could do it on like the shafts and stuff, but I didn't know it worked on the belts too. So you don't have that weird kind of spacing, empty space look. So yeah, quite like that. We will fully automate this maybe tomorrow, actually. We'll kind of see how that works out. As uh, we kind of move forward, we'll finally, I guess, I guess not even finally, I guess we'll start getting into auto crafting, right? And that would be one of those things we want to do. Also, I need to go ahead and uh, run a whole bunch of cable, I guess, down here, too. I need to get it looked, uh, linked up to, like, this storage controller, this storage controller. Then I'll have to get it uh, linked up with all the stuff in this room as well. And I need a room for our chicken, so we can actually start uh, actually utilizing them. Because right now, I'm just doing everything manually, right? But I'll have them all hooked up to a storage controller, too. And another storage bus. But uh, we're looking pretty good here. We actually made pretty good progress today. So we got uh, full, I guess, processor automation. These guys are going to drive me insane. Uh, but we got full processor automation and uh, we got ourselves a fully working system and a flushed out drawer wall Which is not too bad at all, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and actually end this one here So as always guys like this video, please hit that like button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys all to have a good one I'll see you guys in the next video later